Okay, I'm gonna be demonstrating CPR on a dog. Um, we're gonna pretend this is a big dog, and we're going to, so we've figured out he has no uh, heartbeat, and we wanna go ahead and start our compressions. Um, you're gonna go at the, wide, the highest part of their chest, um, and you're gonna, a lot of people say do this. Um, I put my hands on top of each other, but we're gonna do this, and we're right over the top of the highest part of his chest, and it's pretty intense, so you're going to, down and you're gonna make sure you actually push. You wanna go, obviously I'm over exaggerating because he's stuffed, but you wanna do like a third of their body wall to half. Um, and that's gonna force the blood flow kind of into the abdomen and back into the chest. So we're basically beating for it. So it's pretty vigorous. And you're gonna do it to the tune, oh, we always do stand alive. So stand alive, stand alive, oh, 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 stand alive. You wanna make sure when you are doing your compressions, you're gonna come all the way up. So all the way down and then all the way off the chest wall. But so you're just gonna, and it's pretty, like I said, vigorous. Um, and you'll do it in two minute rotations. So I would do it and then usually you have another technician who's timing it, maybe switch. Um, when I worked in med emergency for a little while, we had somebody running drugs. So drawing up any drugs we needed to give. Um, obviously maybe this guy wasn't tubed ahead of time. So somebody's going to tube as I'm doing compressions, somebody may be putting a catheter in as, as I'm doing compressions as well. But we would rotate. Um, somebody's always giving breaths because they obviously need oxygen. So this is connected to this tube and you have your AMBO bag. Um, and you're gonna wanna do one breath every six seconds. And you wanna make sure that you're all the way in, all the way up. But you want their inhale to be a whole second. So it'd be like, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand, and then breath. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand. You can even say seven, one thousand, so you make sure they're getting a full inhale. Um, you do that the whole time. I always have to make sure I'm not watching whoever's doing compressions or I end up like trying to go to it too. Um, but then you just rotate so people don't get tired and give up a little bit on your compressions. Um, if this were even the bulldogs, I've seen them do them, you know, on their back because that's where they're the widest. But so if this were to be a cat, I'm going to do compressions with my hand, and it's going to be the same thing: staying alive, staying alive. Uh, uh, uh. So, but you're going to use make sure you use your whole hand, not just like your fingertips, because again, you want to force that blood out of their chest and into their belly, um, so that they can get blood to all their vital organs. Um, I think I covered everything. So you got going to town in your compressions, you're doing your two minute intervals and it's just, and then two minutes you would switch. I might go to breathing, I might go to recording, I might go to being the one giving drugs, but every couple rounds of compressions, somebody's gonna, you're gonna pause for a second, listen for a heartbeat, continue. Um, you can have an EKG hooked up, but sometimes it gets flung off or it's just not accurate because you're doing it for them. I think that is it. That is how you do CPR on a dog. Like I said, bigger chested dogs, you have to do a little bit differently. Um, cats, obviously, you don't do full compressions. You can do enough with just like a little cardiac pump with your hand. And that's it. That's how you do CPR on a dog and a cat.